Welcome everyone to Philadelphia and the third round of the NCAA Tournament with the 15-7 matchup is the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles from the Atlantic Sun take on San Diego State from the Mountain West. The winner advancing to North Texas in the Sweet 16. Moments ago, Florida Gulf Coast MVP Sherwin Brown addressed his teammates. Well, fellas, just like last time, I'm going to tell you the same thing. We earned the right to be here. Nobody gave us nothing. So we got to go out there and take what's rightfully ours. If y'all with me, then let's get it in. Hell yeah. Hey, 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 for the Eagles and Jamal Franklin for the Aztecs. Well, this is San Diego State. They're the sole survivor from the much haunted Mountain West Conference. If they're going to be able to advance, they're going to have to do it with defense, 19th in the nation in field goal percentage D. All right, let's take a look at the lineups. We talked about Sherwood Brown. Reg, a matchup here you like? Well, we talked about it. Sherwood Brown and his athleticism going against Jamal Franklin. They're both very similar athletes, but more importantly, in demeanor. They both like to do a lot of the little dirty things. Jamal Franklin leads the Atex in four categories. Only one of two players in Division I doing that. Well, the coach of Florida Gulf Coast, the Eagles' second-year man, Andy Enfield. His story has been much talked about over the last couple of days. We'll get more into his story. And there is the birthday boy, 68-year-old Steve Fisher. He has been down this road many times before at Michigan and at San Diego State. Yeah, and you watch Steve Fisher on the sidelines, and it really uh, kind of belies what you just said to a certain extent. He's been through it, should be nervous, but he is just as calm as you want to be. Wonderful crew tonight. Jamie Lucky, who has officiated three Final Fours. Lamar Simpson won Sweet 16, eight tournaments, and Gregory Nixon. And away we go in Philadelphia with San Diego State in white and Florida Gulf Coast in blue. Already coach infield and the Eagles in that matchup. Oh. One, two, two zone that was so effective versus Georgetown as Brown picks up the first foul. Boy, that was just adrenaline. Showing Brown, he's pumped to the max, and he's just got to be able to turn it down a notch. But now he's got to be careful here the rest of this first half. He doesn't pick up that second foul in the first half. And that, that's exactly why being more calm and letting the game come to him is going to be a huge factor. Brown had a big night against Georgetown with 24 points on Friday. Here comes Franklin with a quick quick screw move inside. Well, you talk about a versatile guy. Leads his team in a lot of categories. 21 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists against Oklahoma Friday. You ask him to do it and he'll get it done. On top to McKnight, looking for Brown, who's picked up by Franklin. Here is Palmer on top, had a double-double, throws it away, and picked up by Franklin. And Chase Tampley takes it in, Xavier Thames working on Brown, and back off Tampley. They got, a, they got away with the travel there, yes, man. certainly did. That's why it went in. Xavier Thames, here is a 23 and 10. Mountain West team in San Diego State. The long shot by Franklin. Rebound inside by Feeler. And here come the Eagles. Yeah, it's very important that Florida Gulf Coast try to establish that tempo. Get up and down quickly. That's when they're at their best. They have, they don't run a lot of plays with, with these athletes, so they want to get going quickly. Brown hits the three and shoved on the play, but gets the triple. We mentioned the 24 he had the other night. He is the Atlantic Sun player of the year. And for <laughs> emphasis, he wanted... Oh, Jamal Franklin just to know that this that was is going to be interesting because the Jamal, first of many, right? Jamal Franklin is, is, is one of those guys that's not going to back down and likes to do a little bit of talking too. So you've got two guys that are very similar character. Brown dives inside with a foul. Oh, that easily could have been number two on Sherwood Brown. Well, here's Jamal Franklin once again. Nice fake inside. And then the pirouette in the lane. And here's Sherwood Brown with his first basket of the evening coming off the down screen knocking down the first 
three of the game. Stevens picks up his first brown at the free throw line, a 65% free throw shooter in a walkout. He's from Orlando, from Olympia High School, a 6'4 senior. Some of the numbers right there in that uh, incredible win they had over Georgetown on Friday, 78 to 68. And does, uh, just like Jamal Franklin, a little bit of everything for his team. He bench presses 300 pounds. Look like he should be a, a safety in the NFL. A lot right of the now, dirty work. Right now, this pressure is the quick in the pace. Yeah. Florida Gulf Coast wants to push it up the floor. And also to make San Diego State take some time off the 24, uh, 35 second time. It's Chase Temple with the three. Rebound by Brown, who is very effective on the glass as well. Here comes Florida Gulf Coast, who became the seventh 15 seed to win. Against two seed Georgetown, Tapley leads a three-on-three, three. and Feeler picks it up, and Comer the other way. He had the 12 points and 10 assists on Friday. Thompson navigates his way down the lane. Not it's wasting any time. Boy, Thompson was brilliant versus Georgetown on Friday. He's got to continue that pace of looking at the basket early. Let's see right now, one, two passes and a shot. For San Diego State, Florida Gulf Coast has succeeded in their intent to quicken the pace. Right, Red, John Thompson's performance had the 23 points and the seven rebounds in the win over Georgetown. Here comes Palmer, who was playing so free and easy. Here's Field on side for the triple. And Chase Tampley leaps high and gets it to Singer from Sacramento the other way. And now Thames inside and into Thieler and a foul. I just mentioned that the seventh. 15 seed to win. Last year, both Lehigh and Norfolk State won in the round of 64. You see the very impressive seven. Feeler just picked up his first personal foul for FGCU. And it's not like they surprised Georgetown. They controlled that game from beginning to end, Lynn, which was even more impressive, especially with Georgetown and the hype coming into it being the number two seed. Well, I agree. It wasn't a surprise once the game was over. But the thing I think that did shock Georgetown was the athleticism yeah. of Florida Gulf Coast. I mean, these guys were flying elbows above the rim on the alley oop, and they were coming at the most unexpected of times. Savicevin and Eddie Murray now check in for the Eagles. And a put back right there, and a nice shot is reported by Deshaun Stevens. Now that was a terrific rebound by Stevens. Moved his feet. Didn't just uh, settle for standing there and being blocked out. J.J. O'Brien has checked in for the Aztecs. Thompson on the wing. Tapley is on him. Had a chance to speak with Coach Info at yesterday's practice, and he said Eddie Murray definitely was one of the difference makers in that upset win of Georgetown. His energy off the bench was fantastic. Nice defense by Tapley, but Thompson takes it in, and from behind, Tapley knocks it away and out of bounds, and two. Two seconds on the shot clock. Little more than four minutes gone in Philadelphia. Uh. Greg Gumbel in New York with an All-State Good Hands update on CBS in Kansas City. There's a beatdown going on. Since trailing by nine at halftime, Kansas has gone on a 42-17 run. They lead North Carolina 63-47, under four minutes to play. Kevin, Len, Reggie, back to you. Well, Carolina was so tough in the first half. Jayhawks come back. Looks like they're going to move their program down to North Texas and maybe face the Wolverines. Huh? Well, Kansas is a relentless defensive team. Carolina relied too much on the three and it came back to hurt them. There were two seconds left on the shot clock after that break. The other way in the alley -oop, but it was slammed down by Deshaun Stevens. We yeah. talked about athleticism and Georgetown being surprised by Florida Gulf Coast. Don't sleep on the Aztecs. No changes out of that break, and here comes Comer. 
Double chance right there. Drew three on the side to Murray. Now to Brown. Franklin's right on him. The two MVPs on each other right there. Knocked away by Thane. Shot clock is down to nine. Brown has already hit a long one. Comes in for a mid-range leaner. It's picked up. And here come the Aztecs. Over to Gulf Coast. They've gone over the last four. Ooh. Grinding inside. Deshaun Stevens draws the defense for a foul. Well, you take a look at the push right there in transition. And it's great when you get your big fella to run the floor because it's such an advantage to have a guy athletic just like that and running down the floor creates a lot of problems for the defense and you're playing above the rim. So Benjamin is uh, guilty of the infraction for the Eagles. This is Deshaun Stevens, Reg, an interesting story. He is a senior from Los Angeles. He was cut from his high school team as a senior. And went to Santa Monica City College and played. And that's where Steve Fisher recruited him, saw him, and brought him aboard. Only player to start every game for the Aztec, for the San Diego State Aztecs. Does a little bit of everything. He's not a great scorer, but off to a quick start tonight. Well, we've seen him get offensive rebounds, see him go up and get the alley-oop. He's played pretty solid defense. And like I said, I want to know who this high school coach is. <laughs> I mean, just by virtue of his size alone, yeah, yeah, the upside is tremendous for high school. Tampley will take a seat on the Steve Fisher bench for San Diego State. James Rehan will come in the game for the first time. He was red hot the other day against Oklahoma. And they bring in on the Florida Gulf Coast side, Christoph Faradell. He will check in. And also back in the contest, the starter, Chase Field. And more size now inside as they take Skyler Spencer, a freshman from Inglewood, California, off the Aztec bench and into the game. Well, Skyler Spencer in this trap is the goaltender, last line of defense, and he's an outstanding shot blocker. And with Sherwood Brown going to the bench right now, who is going to step up and score? We talked about Thompson playing great against Georgetown. He's the only real viable scoring option on the floor for Florida Gulf Coast. Seven of the run by San Diego State. Has passed the 15-minute mark here in the first half. Corner takes it inside. Spencer down a hand on it. And here comes Rehan. Spencer doing his job. Rehan, who came off the bench 19 minutes and 17 points the other night for this team. He was great. He was starting off and on as James Rehan. The ball now is Xavier Thames. Missed his first five shots versus Oklahoma. Missed 17 points in 19 minutes. Three, Rehan. And he stays hot. First time since February 9th that Rehan reached double figures. This is the best time and the right time if you're a shooter to find your stroke. He had hurt his shoulder in February. And that affects shooters. I mean, that's all about follow through and rotation. Comer. Faradell from Switzerland trying the alley-oop and overshoots the incoming and leaping Eddie Murray. And the other way now comes Aztec guard Rehan. He got a screen from O'Brien. And you can see that Steve Fisher and his team really has watched that tape versus Georgetown because all those alley-oops as Verdell knocks down his first shot of the evening. He's a 34% three-point shooter, and Verdell knocks that one in for the Eagles. Did not score the other night. We're talking about watching tape. Those alley-oops that were versus Georgetown. San Diego State is really packing the paint, now a lot, not allowing that. Franklin huh. is. That's Jamal Franklin, who in college basketball is one of two players to lead his team in points, rebounding, assists, and steals. A very, very exclusive group. Thompson and Carl. Fans are following in on the baseline. Not going inside. Shot clock remains, ticking at 16. Feeler for three. Franklin with another rebound. He can knock those down. He's got a great three-point shooting, shooting 38% on the year, but he's made 32 of them. Deflected by Thompson. Good hustle. Saves it with a hesitation oh, nice. and the deuce. Used his body well. Shielded the defender still had control of the ball to get it on that window. Yeah, used his body well in that off arm too, Lynn. <laughs> he might have got away with one. So Florida Gulf Coast has started the game 4 of 11. The Aztecs of San Diego State have started the contest 5 of 11. 
Well, San Diego State on defense was taking the inside game away from Florida Gulf Coast, pressing the ball, not allowing the lob. That's traveling. Yeah, and he leaned into the defender trying to get some kind of Trying to felt the contact, but it wasn't there. That's a good no call by the officials there. I'm trying to think of another guy that used to do that when he was playing. That's how he figured out the yeah. off arm and all the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no one could see that. <laughs> well, the freshman guard from Charlotte, Dwan Graff, has just checked in for Florida Gulf Coast, joining Veradell. Dwan remains on the floor. Also back out there is Eric McKnight, who's a long 6'9 sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. I was mentioning before, San Diego State taking away the alley oop, but they're leaving the jumper oh, wide oh, open. Oh, oh. In another three. He was terrific in the A Sun Tournament Championship game, but from the free throw line, the three point shooting, two down the hatch already here. Now he is this Florida Gulf, te Gulf Coast team going to get out and transition and get alley oops. But an excellent three point shooting team. But then again, it's an extension of their coach, Coach Infield. The shooting man. Players coach. Switch on defense. Thames is fouled in. Rayon from outside. Can't get that rainbow to go down and end the game with the rebound with Shepard. They go inside. Spencer knocked away from him by McKnight. And here comes the speedy Grant the other way. Spencer giving a little bit of his own medicine. That's another turnover. And picked up by Franklin on the other way. Now comes Xavier Thames. The fourth turnover for the Eagles so far. You know, if you're a Florida Gulf Coast and you are limited offensively, you can't afford to turn the basketball over. Spencer. McKnight is there defending. And he makes a move. Too many steps and another turnover. It is the third for them. We have a 7-15 matchup in Philly tonight. The long ball has been key for the Eagles so far. Go places. Early in Philadelphia now, the Powerade sideline report with Lewis Johnson. Lewis, good evening. All right, Kevin, good evening to you as well. Well, Florida Gulf Coast Guard Brett Comer lost his dad, Troy, to lung cancer back in January of 2010. And for that young man, it has been a long road of managing the grief of his dad's loss. Troy was the man who coached him in AAU basketball, built the basketball court back behind their house, and spent countless hours helping him with the game. Now, you'll see the tattoos on his arm that honor his dad's life. And before the game, I talked to his mom, and she said that Troy got the RIP for his dad just in November of 2012, and the other on the outside of his arm just three months ago. And according to her, those tattoos represent a huge step in closure. Brett said that it's so crazy how much he still thinks of his dad before, during, and after the games, and he said, I am me because of him. Kevin? And the obituary read that the son was the father's best friend. Three years ago that happened. Thanks about him in moments like this in the NCAA tournament. Great stuff, Lewis. Thank you so much. And what was interesting is after that upset win versus Georgetown, and we were watching the players as they were celebrating on the court, you could kind of see him connecting with his mom and looking up, and what a very reflective moment of the young man. Long two put down by Sherwood Brown. A 10-2 to run by Florida Gulf Coast. Brown has seven points so far for the Eagles. Well, we talk about the defense for San Diego State, top 20 field goal percentage D. The Florida Gulf Coast with excellent ball movement, finding the open shooter. San Diego State has three turnovers in the last four possessions. Here they go under 10 to play now in the first half. Tapley with a nice fake. Rayhan outside working on Brown to the rack. Gets his own miss up and down. Count it. He got it to go. Boy, he's come off the bench range already and put in five quick ones for the Aztecs. And this is something you rarely see from Rayhan taking the ball off the dribble here. You talked about the bad shoulder he had, misses the, the left hand shot, gets his own rebound, takes the contact going to the line. And he was being guarded by Sherwood Brown. And after he went to the basket, he saw Brown step away. He's got that one foul. As you mentioned, Red, he's got to be careful not to pick up two because he's going to wind up on the bench and he's still got 9.46 left. So that belt is pretty much made by the one foul that Sherwood Brown had. Red Comer checking back in now for the Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast. They're located in Fort Myers, Florida. 
They became a school in 1991. They became a Division I basketball program some four years ago. And they were eligible for the tournament just last year. This is their debut in the NCAA tournament. And they pulled up with a huge upset. McKnight with the screen. Veradell to Brown. Ten to shoot. Hose oh, it. Stepped on the side. Sure line. did, yeah. So a miss right there. Opportunity for the Eagles. The boys are back. And by boys, we mean men at work. A brand new season of Men at Work premieres Thursday, April 4th at 10, 9 Central. Only on TBS. Very funny. Florida Gulf Coast is led by as many as five. San Diego State is led by as many as five. Tapley back in, a three over Brown. And out of bounds it goes. Talked about Sherwood Brown being the poster boy for the Florida Gulf Eagles. Here he gets his first to go, the long three, and here's the step back. His energy is so infectious on this team. They really feed off of that win. Well, I tell you, the first three put it over his eye and showing Jamal Franklin. The second three, what was that? The down low three? The down low. He's got them all. <laughs> Brad well, Thompson back in for the Florida Gulf Coast. I haven't only made one in my life. I <laughs> wasn't sure about I'll, the signal. I was, was going to say, just like you used to do back in the day, yeah. right? Well, look, you still say, look, so you remember that McKnight sets a screen. Comer looking. Oh! Oh! Winding up and <laughs> slapping it down. McKnight climbing the ladder. Four assists for Comer. That baby rocking the rim. Oh, inside he rejects a Shepherd scoop inside. Now you've He's got, playing both ends of the floor. Now you've got Eric McKnight energizing into the ball game. And what better way to do that than you send the big man in alley U. Sends it home. Oh, the interesting part goodness. about it after seeing him Friday, should we be surprised? Whew. That's the kind of stuff that shell shots your opponent. Rehan takes it in with a nice left hand layup, and he's got eight points coming off the bench and a quick foul right there going on Winston Shepard of the Aztecs as Comer was coming the other way. It looked like his, he had like a telescopic arm that just kept going <laughs> longer and rears back and hammers it home. But how about the play at the other end after he scored, exactly. blocks the shot out of bounds. Wonderful. Now, One, two, now he's gonna be engaged the rest of the way. Just that one dunk. He doesn't get a lot of touches. He's out there to set screens. He's had another screen right there for Comer, who puts on the brakes inside. This kid can really shoot. Comer, as the Jayhawks have just taken care of the Tar Heels, here is Brown with a 17-foot backup. Nine for him. And you know what made that shot? A pretty handoff by Comer. He turned his body and screened uh, Brown's man to give him just enough daylight to get that off. A lot of congestion inside for Shepard. The freshman from Houston to navigate. The foul called. And a timeout taken. A two-point lead for the Eagles. Proving. Before 2006, George Mason had never won an NCAA tournament game. Well, 06 certainly changed that, as the 11 seeded Patriots won four tournament games en route to the Final Four in Indianapolis. Lowe's never stop improving. Well, you see the early numbers right there. Lenny, you were talking about adjustments for Florida Gulf Coast. They began 3 of 10, but since they've gone 5 of 5. Yeah, well, one of the things they've been able to do is move without the ball, allow Comer to find guys. You know, they now have six assists on eight field goals because of that ball movement, except for McKnight's alley oop dunk. They've been able to, as uh, San Diego State's been able to take them out of the lane, and Florida Gulf Coast has been able to set stuff up on the perimeter. Where's the offense for San Diego State? On the season, they were shooting 44%. Right now, they're shooting 39%. And we talked about the two alpha males, Sherwood Brown, as we see right there, off to a, a great start, nine points, three or four shooting. But what about Jamal Franklin? He does have four points of two or three, but we need more from that. At the free throw line is Winston Shepard, the freshman from Houston who played some prep ball in Nevada at Finley Prep. So far, Rahal has come off the bench for eight for San Diego State, nine for Brown. The player of the year in his conference and foul tournament scores. Stats and news live on the CBS Sports app. Get it free by texting SCORE to 42777 or by visiting cbsports.com slash mobile. 
from your phone or tablet. I'll tell you what, this Winston Shepard is going to be a good player. I mean, he is a 6'8", really point guard. Comes off the bench as a freshman. Has a great bounce to his game. Steve Fisher is not afraid to put him in situations of handling the ball when the game is on the line. Here comes Thompson. First time now. Lendry's seen the full court man-to-man -man by San Diego State. Yeah, and they're, they're a tough defensive team. But what they have to do is now try to counteract the movement without the ball. That's getting open shooters for Florida Gulf Coast. Seven and a half to play in the half. Brown with nine. Rayhan on him. Feelers on top, and Comer now has it with a switch on D. And they have Franklin on Comer. I'll tell you what, I, I like having Winston Shepard on Comer. He's got size. Three outside, rebound by Jamal Franklin. He passes his third, and they come the other way. Tapley outside, Rayhan pulling it from three. Comer comes up with the loose ball, and he's off to the races. Following McKnight, inside to him. And now seven to play, and here we go with the game knotted at 21, and number 21, Franklin, to Rayhan. Stevens in tackle. Franklin reeling inside, knocked away by Comer and a whistle. Well, it's 46. You talk about the athleticism of Florida Gulf Coast. And you had to be impressed with these jaw-dropping knockdown dunks. Guys are extending. Guys are getting elbows above the rim. And when McKnight dunked it, we all kind of leaned back and said, whoa, but I'm saying, shouldn't we be surprised after last night? Ball was kicked. We shouldn't be feeling out coming in for McKnight. Well, I thought that it was kicked by an Eagles player, but apparently not. Nice defense there by Comer stripping the basketball from Jamal Franklin as he was going to the hoop. It's Thompson on the run. Shepard was defending. Probably all to the shot. The other way comes Franklin. Yeah, you see that length coming at him? That's why he's on the floor there. Another reason why I like him guarding Brett Comer. Those, those alley-oops won't be there when you have a 6'8 guy guarding the point guard. Good point. Tampley got around Murray and scoops it home. Yeah, he's, he's got a, a good feel, this, this freshman in, in Shepard. He can see over the defense. He can post you up. He saw the cutter there in Tapley. Yeah, nice little silver cut straight down from the elbow down to the block to get him an easy shot. Here's another alley -oop. Too high. That feeler caught himself, readjusted, and puts it in as Florida Gulf Coast looking to be the first 15 seed in NCAA tournament history to advance to the Sweet 16 in the Aztecs going for their second Sweet 16 appearance in the last three seasons. Slashing inside with the move. Tapley had three the other night. Has a couple now, and Stevens again comes up, shoves it in. He's got eight points so far for San Diego State. Well, they're doing a nice job on the offensive glass. And what's going to happen here, if you don't put pressure on Brett Comer, he's got all the openings in the vision to throw those alley-oops. Offensive foul number two going on Sherwood Brown. You know, if you're Coach Andy Enfield, you got to get Sherwood Brown out. Just picked up his second foul. 5-13 left here in this first half. There's Andy Enfield. He said the other night, here's how he celebrated. He had over 500 texts, and he was drowsy and couldn't get any sleep because his two-year-old kept him up all night. He said he may have gotten an hour's sleep. He's got some young kids, and uh, and they're on the trip with him. His family is here and enjoying. He told us, he, he told us, this team enjoy every second. I mean, this this doesn't happen. And as Steve Fisher then reiterated, it goes in the blink of an eye. It happens so fast, and then it's gone. And you can certainly enjoy it, but sometimes you got to think separate rooms. You got to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like Coach Andy Enfield's out here playing, so he can afford to only get an hour's rest. The round of 32 coming into this weekend, the third round. After this, Duke will play Creighton right here in Philadelphia. It's a three from Franklin. What a pretty stroke from outside. Nobody near him. That's the problem. You can't give Jamal Franklin wide open looks. He's got to be challenged on every shot. A lot of runs in this game. Now San Diego State in a little 9-2 run. Ralph outside, Thompson free to fire. Thames the close, and down it goes. Seems like they always have an answer. They did the same thing 
on Friday when Georgetown made runs, and it seems like they're doing it tonight. Darren Ellis back in the game. Graf Thompson, McKnight is back in there on the perimeter here.